RuneScape has changed much in the 20 years since its initial release. Many of us long for that magical experience it provided when we first started playing. My quest is to recreate that experience by playing a time-locked Iron Man. In order to progress forward in time, I'll have to experience all of the content as it is released on a month-to-month -month basis. My name is Kuda Bear, and welcome to Time Traveler Iron Man. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Time Traveling Iron Man. This will be the final part of May 2001, as we've already completed the magic and prayer grinds required for this month. The only thing left is for us to get on this crafting grind, so let's get it started. Welcome back to Time Traveling Iron Man. So crafting was pretty bare bones upon initial release. The only methods that were really available for crafting were unfortunately clay pottery and gold jewelry, including all of the ring and amulet variants all the way up to diamond. So in theory, I would have to go all the way up to 70 crafting in this episode and obtain the diamond amulet of power as part of my unlocks. 70 crafting may not seem like it's all that high, but the unfortunate part is with only clay and gold as my crafting methods, it is extremely slow to train. I tested crafting clay on an alternate account and I was getting about three and a half thousand experience per hour, meaning it would take almost 200 hours to achieve 70 crafting. I didn't even bother testing the gold as because I'm locked with a bronze pickaxe and there's not very many gold rocks at this point in the game, I didn't think it would be worth it. Clay is definitely the only viable option for training. And unfortunately, don't even think about things like glass blowing or even leather or honestly even silver crafting. None of these existed at this point in the game mode. So this is where I'm going to put in an excessive grinding exception, and I'm going to bring the gold down from the power amulet at 70 crafting to the strength amulet at 50 crafting. This is because the strength amulet is definitely a niche item that I will probably use for most of my melee training, except for things that have really high defense where the power amulet will probably be better. For now, we'll just be doing clay all the way to 50 crafting. Let's go ahead and jump in. All right, now it's time to clean out my inventory so we can start the crafting grind. Go ahead and sell everything. Bye, law runes. I don't need you anymore. Sad day. Well, I can use one more to get back to Varrock real quick. And I am going to go ahead and take advantage of depositing my coins back into the bank so that I can have an entirely empty inventory to optimize this grind as much as possible. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about how this is going to work. I'm going to start by mining 28 clay in the Varrock West Mine, of course utilizing a bronze pickaxe. Then I'm going to traverse up to the Chef's Guild, which is actually, I believe, the closest water source to this entire loop that there is. So that's why I got the Chef's Hat. Annoyingly, I'll have to drop a couple clay to pick up a container of water, as you cannot just use the clay on the water source. Then I'll go ahead and trek over to the Barbarian Village, where the only pottery furnace and spinning wheel is. Thankfully, both in the same building, so that's at least a really close step. Each of these trips I'm estimating will take me about 11 to 12 minutes depending on how attentive I am, and I have to do about 144 of them. So that results in a grand total of just over 26 hours to get to 50 crafting. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. Oh, this is actually it's entirely frustrating. I have to use the jug of water on the sink every time and then use it on the clay, but there's like a tick delay between using the jug of water on the clay and it actually becoming a jug again. And if I click use on it too soon, it won't do anything when I click on the sink because it is now a jug and no longer a jug of water. And uh, it's just really slow to do this. It would be a lot faster if I could have multiple uh, containers for water, but there's only one jug spawn here in the guild and I don't know of a good way to find any additional containers that uh, wouldn't require me to run to a store and get money or find another spawn. It's such a tight loop that I just don't think it's worth going out of my way. I just gotta suffer through. Funnily enough, you actually couldn't make any other items other than pots and pie dishes. So I unlocked pie dishes at level 7 and that is unfortunately my highest experience method. Uh, interestingly, you can actually fail when firing these. Like, I failed one, and that's super interesting, and I'm pretty sure the failure rate is zero very quickly, so it's such a weird mechanic. Man, who crafts clay? Oh yeah, I do. The other interesting part is, like, this is a seven or eight tick action to fire the pie dishes, so an inventory takes me like two and a half minutes, 
So it is such a weird mix of extreme AFK and zero AFK. <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> right after I said, who crafts clay? There's another champion here that's crafting clay. That is amazing. There's 20 crafting, so now I can craft sapphires. If I happen to get any while mining, I will go out of my way to go buy a chisel and just chisel the sapphire real quick. No reason not to, and just a little bit of bonus experience. All right, there is sapphire amulets at 24 crafting. That means that I could craft an amulet of magic, which would be an upgrade over the amulet of accuracy for magic. Huh, apparently an imp can teleport here and get stuck. <laughs> well, now you know. So I actually started carrying one jug with me. I'll still go up here and grab the second jug, but that actually reduces the number of clicks required to make the entire inventory of soft clay by half. And I think that's worth the lost efficiency of having one less inventory slot. It's just so much easier to actually make the clay because I can click to fill the jugs, it fills both jugs, and then I can make two clay with one click as well. I do have a space bar press in there too, but it's no big deal. And it's so much more convenient, so I'm gonna do this for now. There's 31 crafting, which is actually emerald amulets. Unfortunately, the most useless amulet being the amulet of defense, I'll definitely never make one, but it's good to know that I can if I get any emerald. And this is the second person I've seen uh, crafting clay. It's not just like a little clay, it's like a full inventory of clay too. I'm not the only one. All right, so that's 40 crafting. I totally missed the level as per usual. I also got over 500 total recently. I didn't even notice that either. That's incredible. 40 crafting is notable because it would allow me to enter the crafting guild, but the crafting guild actually did not exist. Didn't exist till 2002, surprisingly. So this remains my best method. Unfortunately, I haven't received a single gem yet. I've mined close to 1500 clay ore already, and I haven't seen a single gem. So I'm wondering if it's impossible to get gems from clay rocks, or I'm just really unlucky. Nothing on the wiki seems to indicate that it's impossible to get them, but I don't know, I just I haven't seen a single one yet, and then it's kind of making me worried. I was hoping to get the ruby as part of the clay mining, but we'll see how it goes. Wow, it is possible. And frogs. <laughs> I got a sapphire after 1500 clay, so I might still get a ruby before 50, but I also might not based on that. Honestly, this doesn't even really seem worth it anymore. I was hoping I'd get a lot more gems but I can at least come to the store here and buy a chisel and cut it, get a little bit of bonus experience. So I'll do that, go ahead and chop it, and then sell it back to the store for a little bit of money. It's something, right? 100 coins. So not a very notable level on its own, but a notable level in the grand scheme of things, as 43 is halfway to 50. I can also cut diamonds, though I'm very unlikely going to see a diamond as part of this grind there, and extremely rare from rocks. But that's still exciting. Uh, you know, 50% down, halfway to go, about 13 hours. It's actually been really smooth so far. This will never stop being painful. Just knowing that if I could do that event, get that book, throw it onto crafting, it would save me a literal hour of work. Okay, there is 49 crafting. Uh, which is the last one before I can craft the strength amulet, which is the goal, of course. Unfortunately, I have not received a ruby yet, even though I'm basically on drop rate. So I have a bit of an idea to change it up for the last level. It'll be slower crafting experience, but hopefully I think it'll give me a better shot at the ruby. So let me walk you through what my thoughts are. So the only real way to get a gem at the time is to get a gem roll while mining. You could technically get a gem nowadays from the rare draught table, and that technically is legal based on my rules. However, it's way less likely than just getting it while mining, so that's what I'm going to be going for. Every time that you have a chance to mine a rock, so for a bronze pickaxe that's every 8 ticks, there's a 1 out of 256 chance that you'll do a gem roll. On the gem table, there's a chance you'll get nothing, but then there's a chance you'll get some uh, gems depending on which tier you roll. So in the case of clay rocks, I have 100% chance to mine the clay every time my pickaxe allows me to do a roll, which is every eight ticks. I do technically get one gem roll then before I would get the clay. However, I only get one gem roll per rock then, and that's not very many. So if I'm actually mining a higher tier rock, one that doesn't give me a guaranteed ore every time my pickaxe rolls, that'll actually give me more gem rolls in the time it takes me to mine the rock, 
which is slightly faster than what I'm doing now with clay as I'm not walking or changing between rocks as much, I'm actually just mining more. Now the chance of rolling a ruby from any individual tick at mining is actually 1 out of 4096. It's pretty rare. I've actually mined pretty close to 4000 clay as part of this grind, so I have effectively already almost gone the drop rate for a ruby dry. And even if I had a rock that I can mine and never successfully get an ore from, only gems, it would still take me a minimum of 5 hours to hit the drop rate for a ruby again. So I might have a long grind in front of me just to see this ruby. So here we are. I'm actually going to be mining gold ore for the remainder of my crafting grind, unless I get the ruby and then I'll probably go back to clay because it will be much faster. But this will actually be a lot better for me as it's going to be significantly more AFK. The nice thing about the gold as well is I believe the gold amulets sell for about 150 GP each to the general store, the, um, the unstrung ones. So I'll get a decent amount of money and I will need some more money for next month. So this money is not going to waste and extra time isn't either. One unfortunate part of this part of the journey is I will have to world hop between rocks unless I just want to stand here for I think it's like two minutes for it to respawn. So there is a gem. It's not the gem I want, but it's a gem. I'll take it. It's good money, because now I can actually make it into jewelry. Hell yes, that is the ruby achieved. Oh, that's so amazing. I was seriously getting worried that I was going to get all the way up to 50 crafting and not have it, and would have had to spend some extra time mining. It just, uh, oh, it's so great to have. I mean, I definitely was like almost 50% uh, over drop rate or so, judging by my rough math, so I'll take it, absolutely. Just need to do a little bit more gold now to finish up 50 crafting, and then we can finally bring the month of May to a close. I am so excited. So I thought maybe I was the most excited person to get a ruby ever in the game, but, uh, but my friend was a little bit more <laughs> excited than me, I think. <laughs> By the way, this is how I, I actually do this method. I don't think I actually showed it. It's just go walk down to the furnace here and smelt the bars and then smith the amulets, sell them to the general store, and then we're done. Just need to do a couple more inventories and we'll have 50. Actually gonna hold on to the sapphire amulet I just made. I got a sapphire from mining, just getting close to wrapping up the gold now. But I'm gonna go ahead and hold on to that because I, uh, when I hunt for a uh, cosmic rune drop for the ruby, I'm gonna get a drop of two, so I might as well save it and make an amulet of magic in the same process. Whew, I am extremely tired. This has been a heck of a grind. Probably like over 30 hours at this point, including the time to get the ruby. But there we go, 50 crafting. I can now craft ruby amulets. So let's go ahead and make the unstrung amulet right now. I already cut the ruby a while ago. Oh, that's incredible. Here's the easy part done, at least. Go ahead and make the actual amulets themselves. Now time for the hard part. I have to go find some cosmics to enchant these guys. Don't forget, uh, pretty much all of the high level runes, including cosmics, are only available from monster drops. But don't worry, I have a plan. Okay, so here we are. I'm gonna go ahead and kill the ice warriors to get the cosmic rune drops, as I believe it's a one out of 26, which is pretty common. So I got a thousand casts, that should give me double the drop rate and should be pretty straightforward and also they're really obnoxious but I definitely didn't plan the cosmic rune grind into my magic grind I'm gonna go uh, a little bit over what I need for magic for sure this will probably get me to 59 anyway there it is 59 magic no cosmic rune yet and I've killed about 40 <laughs> and I've gotten five iron battle axes but those are like double the drop rate of cosmic runes this is one of those moments where you just you wonder if the wiki's drop rates are wrong because you're just getting such strange luck. But I figured I'd go ahead and actually cast Fire Blast. I got a Death Rune drop. I don't think I've done that yet, so let's go ahead and do that. 14. Pretty good. I'll just use the other one too while I'm here. I swear. Look at my inventory. Look at what's on the ground. Why are there so many iron battle axes? Do these things even drop cosmics? I, 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 I kid you not, that was the very next kill. <laughs> cool. Well, we're done here. Let's go ahead and grab these. And I am going to actually finish up with my cast that I have currently. Oh, and I just noticed I broke a million experience. I didn't even realize that till just this moment. Pretty much done. I want to hold on to a couple of runes here as I want to teleport back to Varrock using this law rune drop I was lucky enough to get. 
Um, and then I can go ahead and enchant these amulets. So that gets me an amulet of magic, which is pretty nice. Best in slot for magic for a super long time, actually. And enchanting the same for the ruby amulet gives me the amulet of strength, which is technically best in slot for melee, sort of. It depends on what I'm fighting, as the amulet of power is better against very high defense monsters. However, there's not a whole lot of those right now. So that'll be great. 10 strength bonus on that bad boy. And 10 magic bonus on the Amulet of Magic. I will hold on to the Amulet of Accuracy for now as it's my only ranging amulet, um, but I will be getting a Amulet of Power ASAP to replace it. All right, and that actually finally brings May 2001 to a close. What an absolute journey this month has been. I have achieved the Amulet of Strength, also managed to finish up 43 prayer. Amount of prayer, of course, can't actually use it, but that is still incredible. What a chicken grind that was. And then also got my combat stats up to 40 in that process, so I am rune ready. And then of course, finally, getting up to 59 magic, I can cast Fire Blast whenever that would be useful. More importantly, I can do things like high alchemy and teleporting, though. Oh, this is so painful without running, because Hans never stops moving. So I've actually been here for, I think that's 168 hours or so. And if you subtract my playtime from the end of uh, the end of April, then I've spent a hundred and four hours in this month, which is by far the most time I've spent in a month. It's actually more time than I spent in the entire rest of the game mode. But of course, the close of one month, brings with it the start of a new one. I hope you guys are ready as we are going to be moving into June 2001 and June 2001 brings with it one of the most important changes to the game ever yet seen before. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Take care.